about that incredibly regal curtsy that you do on stage? I think it's to see if I can still get down there. <laughs> Earlier, it was a uh, vivaciousness. Now it's just plain guts. <laughs> thank you very much. You're very kind. Audiences are still saying thank you to Leontine Price, two years after she bade farewell to the Metropolitan Opera. You were super splendid. In her final performance, she sang Aida. She had made the role her own during her 32-year career as the first black superstar of opera. I left her on the crest of the wave, my best friend. I think that through her, I made my niche. I will always love her as I do me, because she is me. Uh, and my last performances were of me, I think, as a, full, uh, a human being who is uh, more at peace with herself. Well, as you know, we have a different form of questioning which will apply here because we have... Every form of recognition that one, one can imagine has been bestowed be upon Leontine Price. No do you have anything whatever to do with the sport world? No. <laughs> I'm going to take a wild guess from the quality of the voice yes. and ask if you are now singing at Basin Street. <laughs> No. This is a baby picture of mine. Oh, that I was so adorable now. <laughs> very proud of this. 1981 Kennedy Center Award. Very, very proud of that. Oh, wonderful. Yes. There's quite a few items, all of them I'm very proud of. Let's begin. These two over here are two presidents who gave me my first award. The first um, a classical artist, opera singer to receive the Freedom Medal, April 1965. And to the right is President Carter for my first Emmy in performance at the White House, mm -hmm. which was a, a recital we gave. Leontine Price will tell you that the flamboyance of Puccini's heroines appealed to her personality, but she centered her career on Verdi, whose music best suited the qualities of her lustrous soprano voice. I like very much to be good at one thing, uh, rather than being mediocre at 10, it's substance. I like to win, you see. I'm, I'm very simplistic and very candid. She has won 18 Grammy Awards. Now, at age 60, her recording days are over but she has embarked on new ventures. Okay, andiamo su. A cominciare. They're showing off. <laughs> <laughs> Let's begin, let the games begin. Let the games begin. Yes. Yeah. I started my first master class, and I'll tell you, it just may be the substitute because there's nothing more glorious than to, than to share my experiences and to be able to help develop now. Oh, 
that many high seas in the world like that, you know, you're going to get off it that quick? <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's what I mean by... Her first students I last mean, summer were enrolled in the training program of the San Francisco Opera. Originally, Leontine Price was going to work only with young female singers, but male students demanded an equal opportunity to sing for her, and so they did. Could may I have also now? Now, this is not final enough, dear. It should be a little, little more tapered at the end. Um, you could even make it even, even more lyric. And and don't and don't be, don't be afraid to be expressivo. It was brilliantly established. I enjoyed it very much. I wouldn't want to do it every day, but it worked. And sustained beautifully. It's just that the, the thing, the the the, the problem that you. intention is to keep singing. Shortly after finishing her first master class, Leontine Price was back in San Francisco to commemorate the 75th anniversary of the San Francisco Symphony. San Francisco is important to her. It was there at the Opera House in 1957 that she made her first major American operatic debut. She had already appeared twice on national television in NBC Opera Company productions, here in 1956 in Mozart's The Magic Flute. Before that, she had earned international fame for her role as Bess in a revival of George Gershwin's Porgy and Bess. She played opposite William Warfield, whom she later married and divorced. Are there sacrifices that you've had to make? Many, yes. I would say they are personal ones in my, in my case because it is totally non-compromising. Uh, to have the kind of career that I not only enjoy, that I'm, that I'm, that I, but that I am glad I pursued. Do you have any role models? I would say as far as copying the substance of how to maintain your priorities to be a total career woman, Elizabeth I. It's very interesting that she was the first, I think, and most total, complete uh, career woman that I've read about. Did you ever, like Elizabeth I, order someone to be beheaded? Being a monarch, that was her privilege. Um, being a singer, <laughs> I haven't ordered anyone beheaded, but uh, I, I have to be candid, may I? You may. Yes, I have a little list that uh, that uh, that uh, I just soon were, <laughs> and the list is 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 long. I'm I'm shocked to say longer than I thought it would be when I first began. <laughs> Thanks very much, Peter. It's about six o'clock. I'm in control of my life. I can't possibly function any other way. Everybody wants to place you someplace. You know, that's been a problem with me. That's, that's why the list got long. <laughs> the one we were talking about, you know. Leave me alone. I mean, who are you to decide who I am and what I am? I am capable of doing it. I appreciate that. Two years ago, as she entered a new phase of her life, Leontine Price found the perfect protector and guardian. Thank you. We get upstairs and we'll talk to Joe about the schedule. A retired brigadier general, her brother, George Price. It's worked out brilliantly. I don't think he had any idea. He loves details. 
He loves the control of, of figures, of, of organizing. I've been on time for two years, my dear. To go out in public on your day off is just as much work as going out in public to perform. True. And it takes the same amount of effort. If you're really a professional, you are uncompromising in that standard. You cannot compromise it whether you're going to the movie, going to the A&P, or going to the Metropolitan Opera or Carnegie Hall. The standards when you hit the front door are the same. That didn't start in this era. It started at 48 South Fifth Avenue in Laura, Mississippi. That's just the way we were brought up. The general and the diva remind each other of their parents. Their mother, a midwife, sang in the church choir. Their father, a carpenter, played the tuba in a band. I, I find that there are so many things that I don't have to take care of anymore. It's like being with my father, who was, it was always a cozy feeling for me being with my father. And I feel very, very loved. They are conscious of each other's extraordinary achievements. They are proud, patriotic, and private. Right now, I'm trying to keep the line moving. Feeling How are you? Thank you, sir, for coming. Thank you. You're more.